Featuring over 1,000 artists from over 200 tribes, the Santa Fe Indian Market organized by the Southwestern Association for Indian Arts is the largest and most prestigious Native American art market in the world. I am Tanapa Atlohiki, and I am the creator of this piece here, and it's titled Autumn Rose Carnival. And this piece here was created in celebration of the birth of my granddaughter, Autumn, Autumn Rose. And if you see, there's a lot of different vibrant colors in the, in the bag and in the weaving and I created those colors, selected them to give like a festivity, a festive um, kind of spirit to the piece. And these are a series of shawls that I do. And it's a wearable art. Yeah, wearable art to be used. And also at times the, the um, purchasers put it on the wall to admire. Hi, uh, my name is David De Los Oya Jr. Um, Originally, I'm from Hopi. I was born and raised in Southern California, city of Anaheim. So a lot of my work, I'm an IAI alumni. So about 20 years of painting, um, learning different techniques from other painters that I was going to school with. Um, a lot of my depictions depict the Hopi culture, um, stories from my grandparents and my mother and father. Um, other influence include um, the city life, urban life, uh, graffiti, gang life, the low riding, all the Southern California scene. Uh, you see a lot of the airbrushing, um, mixing of mediums, epoxies, high, you know, high finishes. So um, it's just about 20 years of experiencing different techniques and putting them all in together, cultural infusion. I, I like to give it a gloss finish. It, not only does it seal it, but it also pushes and gives the painting depth. My name is Rosie Yellowhair, and this painting is called The Protector, okay? These are the protectors. They're the Navajo uh, twin warriors, the, uh, the, the water baron child, and the home, uh, the talking god. That's why they call them. But they're the protector. This sand um, painting here is a nightway chant sand, sand painting connected with this one here. And then these two figures stand for the beauty, the blessing way, uh, also they stays for the balancing of things put back together right here. So I ended up doing this thinking, I had, I had gone into prayer, oh, about a year ago, you know, like I'm telling me, give me some new insight, give me something else I need to do. What do I need to do to do this? And this is what I came up with. My name is Jameis, and I am exhibiting here at Santa Fe India Market. And thank you, first of all, for supporting us artisans. Uh, we're going to talk about my guy right here to my right. And actually, he is part of a TV show, and we're doing character development with him right now. And he is a part of the Navajo deity. Uh, we have a mask here. Ponderosa pine, all hand stamped. I do lost wax casting, and we have juniper branches right here. We have pinion pine cone right here. And then we have juniper leaves, the bark right here, a period piece blanket from the 1920s right here. And of course, we have good old trickster, the coyote, um, an inlay piece done moi by myself. And of course, I call this one swirling through time because when we talk about time in this environment anyways, everybody likes to refer to tree rings for dating, okay? And hence, he is above that, and he's the one who counts time. That's who he is. If you look at it, 
you still have the, um, the dark red colors exhibit here, which in Navajo weaving is not in the circle of color dyeing. So this had to be imported probably, which was introduced by um, the Hubble Trading Post people in Ganado, Arizona. So, and then Harvey came in and et cetera, et cetera. So, but thank you. With the fish, because every one of them has um, their own different um, design. Um, they all have their own character. So every single fish that's painted on here has a different design on it. And I call it the first day of school. Oh, these are all hand coiled, slam coiled, what I use. And then I use the yucca brush to paint all the art onto my pottery. And um, my husband, I'm back here. He's the one that gets the clay for me. He does the grinding for me. And then I'm the one that makes them and paints them. Yeah, so it's all done by hand. I use the yucca brush to um, paint all my uh, fine line art. The bigger brush is like for the bigger pots and the smaller one is for the miniature pieces that I make too. They're all fired. I use the kiln firing them. Well, I did have one casualty. It was probably about this big and um, it did have a lot of fine line on it and it had a bear paw on the front, on, on the top of it. And um, it, it had this like little, little light that I put in there. So at night it would light up on the ceiling top there, but um, I didn't sealed the coils good enough and then it, it cracked on the side. I'm yeah. Carolee Martha Lee Douglas. I'm Northern Arapaho He's and so originally from Oklahoma. I live in Washington State I mean, I get and this basket yeah, is called so Sky I'm Woman. So happy for she was inspired by He's my uh, Northern Arapaho really tribe, the Sky the people. And so she yeah, is looking down on earth like 10 years ago. <laughs> and she's just looking up, really like upon creation you know, and on the people. And she's looking at yeah. looking at him with like hope yeah. and you know the something like positive museum, positivity you know, that everyone is taking care of themselves, of their loved ones, and then our, our, our earth. I had to experiment with the size, like the size of the hands. So I looked at you know like different materials because some of them were too um, they weren't pliable enough. So these are my my samples. Yeah. I'm here at the Santa Fe Indian Market. I like to show you a little bit of my work here. Okay, this is all traditional Hopi pottery. Everything that you see here all comes from the earth, the clay, the pigments, and it's all fired outdoors with sheet gun. All the designs on the pottery all have a meaning to it of some sort. And uh, the technique and the method was handed down to me by my grandmother and my mom as well. So that's how I got my teachings from doing all of this work. The designs on here signify either moisture, there's your corn design here. And then the, the red top here signifies the female um, cloud and it has a four directions, northeast and south. And the female cloud signifies warmth, love, and comfort. And then you got your corn here, which is protection, which is the, uh, the mother, she protects us. And then you got your uh, bird, bird wings here, which will carry our uh, prayers up to the, to the uh, spirit world. And then you have the migration sign here also, which signifies that the prayers and blessings will go all over, bless the universe, bless the people. And the clouds here signify moisture, which signifies long good life. And it just kind of repeats itself. And um, it's all built with earth clay and it's shaped with gourd shirts and uh, it's sanded with sandstones, burnished with uh, smooth riverbed rocks. 
and then it's uh, painted on with a yucca salmon. Paints and um, um, pigments all come from the earth, and then it's fired outdoors with sheep dung at a temperature of 1900 degrees. So everything is done, then it's fired. Yeah, I go by um, Alex, Alex Lewis, and um, I'm enrolled in uh, Cheyenne River at Sikibu, South Dakota, and I'm part Dene, Navajo too, my dad's side. And I worked with uh, Manzanita mainly. Um, so I sculpt. I'm just all around. Uh, I, I like just creating um, things, you know. I mean, it, it's probably something I started as a child. Um, during my time, you know, we didn't have uh, the internet as a kid. So I was always outside kind of playing in mud and, you know, just making my own things, kind of talking to my, you know, being my own best friend, as you would say, you know, kind of. I, I grew up on the Navajo reservation as a as a young young child, so we just had, you know, um, the basic necessities. You know, we didn't have electricity at the time, so I, I guess that creativity kind of started from, you know, during that time. So every time I look at some, I guess we all kind of see this or have this ability. We we, we see like, you know, faces and rocks or images. You know, clouds. You know, when the, the most thing is you. People see stuff in clouds. That's kind of how I kind of start my process, you know, working with different types of uh, medium. But my main medium is um, Mazzita. And this is a, this is Mazzita. And it kind of grows in central, um, well, I get mine in central California. Um, they grow along the west coast. I believe they start growing about 2000 in elevation. Um, they're a slow growing plant, they're hardwood. And um, they're, uh, they burn hot, so they retain a lot of oil. So they, they pretty much last um, uh, through a lot of droughts um, just because they retain a lot of their own oil. And this is also Manzita on this side. And I, I do carve other, um, you know, I carve stone, I carve other woods. The, and the branches of Manzita, this is what it looks like when I get it, find a piece that's pretty much um, gray and already run its course in this life. So, um, and I bring it back into a second second life. When I go harvest, so I, I kind of, it's a modern type of uh, thing for me, but it's kind of still hits home. So I go harvest and, you know, go in the woods and go look for, um, you know, potential piece I can work with. So um, that kind of, you know, kind of keeps me connected to how my, you know, great grandparents, you know, used to gather and hunt and, kind of use the natural resources to their better, you know. So today, you know, obviously I have to, you know, make a buck. So it's like, uh, you know, this is something that came natural. So you kind of go out in the woods and it kind of feels comfortable. Um, and I just don't grab, you know, a bunch of stuff or back to a, a bunch of wood. Um, I find a, a piece that kind of you know, resonates, kind of speaks to me. This is ironwood. This is the first time I got a uh, carved this piece. But I, it took me a while. I had it for years, probably almost 10 years. Um, it was already kind of in this form, so I knew it was going to be a whale. It's like, oh man, that when I when I when I got this piece, I was like, oh man, that looks like a whale. It, it was already there. So when I carve my work, I, I just try to leave. That, that's how I find my pieces. I said, oh yeah, that looks like that. That looks like that. So if I can see it. You know, that's then it, it could appear, or I can kind of cut away at it and um, make it happen. I haven't carved iron wood before, and um, it wasn't coming out right because I'm trying to be more realistic, I guess, in a way. But and sometimes I, you know, you just kind of stop, you know, try not to be too more realistic. And so I just went with the flow of the wood, and I was able to still kind of pull it off. I'm Lisa Chavez Thomas. I'm from the Pueblo of Asleta. It's just south of Albuquerque. Um, I am a pyro engraver and woodworker, which is a pyro engraving is a fancy name for wood burning. So I make these pieces here from gourds and from wood. I make figures and I have a small selection here today. So I make these cute little figures. It's a, we call her Eagle Clan woman, and she's got her tablita, and she's got the sun rays around her. The body is a gourd, and then the tablita is cottonwood. And all the line work and the texturing is all burnt. 
And I use pens that burn at different, um, there's dial settings for it. So I can get different textures, de depth of them. And it is painted with acrylic. A lot of people ask it, oh, is it inlaid with turd bices? No, it's, it's painted. So, um, I was originally an architectural drafts person and I started using my skills as a drafts person to make this what it is now. This one here is a rattle. Um, he's a very fancy rattle. You wouldn't really use this in any of our cultural dances. It, it's too, it's more for show. It is, it's pretty loud. Um, get the sound by cleaning the inside out and then filling it with BBs. So it's got the um, thunder clouds and rain coming down to the earth. It's got the eagle feathers, which are the sun rays going around the sun. And the other side is basically the same design. They're never the same. They're always a little bit different, and it's got a very fancy handle on it. My name is Lance Yazzi, and um, this particular piece is carved out of uh, honeycomb calcite, and it represents, um, it's, the title of it is Our Mother's Creations. And I wanted to showcase the rug weaving, which is uh, traditional to the Navajo people. And then I also wanted to showcase the, uh, the back of it, uh, representing our Mother Earth's creation, which is uh, the natural stone. Um, this particular stone was a 600 pound piece and I had to split it. Uh, and then after I split it, that's when I was able to start the carving process. And as you can see from this, this far end to this far end, it was probably about seven to eight inches thick, maybe nine inches thick at its thickest. So removing all that stone is, is uh, a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. And I love to carve. Despite you know the, uh, the, the, the polish, you, you do have to uh, do a lot of hand sanding. You can't get around it. So you still, you still lose uh, you know, a lot of your fingerprints and stuff. <laughs> Purposed. So I go thrift stores and find any items that are ready to, you know, be thrifted away. I usually give them a second life by adding things to it. And this is an actual piece that I fatigued on. One of our tribal members is a fancy shawl dancer, and I wanted to de depict her on a jacket. So I did wax and fabric dyes and paints, and then just finished it up and then just stitched it on there. So it gave this whole. <laughs> J. Crew, something, another, another life. Of course, my favorite piece is the one I did here. This one I did all of my um, stuff that I really love doing, which is printing, weaving. I bleach dye. Again, repurposed denim, you know, pockets. I mean, Levi's. Hello. And then also, I brought in some of my uh, skills of quilting block printing, bleaching, and embroidery. This is a sash done from our tribe, Cushada tribe of Louisiana. And we're descendants of the Mound people, so this is another example of design. So, and I learned a lot of these items, um, but uh, techniques when I attended the University of um, Arts London. So I graduated from the College of London. So. <laughs> Rogers, these are my uh, art pieces. I started about um, 12, 13 years ago. Small pieces, they grew to big pieces, and I went back to some small pieces, but they've uh, um, evolved over the years and gotten more intricate, a lot more colors. Uh, they are carbon steel, ceramic tile, very good for outdoors. That's my goal is to. Uh, make them so that you could choose to have it indoors, outdoors, under portels and entryways. That's always uh, a great place to put them. And they are basically, I have lots of clients that come back and return and uh, buy pieces year after year. And they always say the same thing. Those are the conversations that pieces of my home. Everybody loves to have a, a good sit down and talk about them and ask about them. And they just bring so much 
joy to that uh, person's home when they go home. I want a first place for this one. This is a new style of mine. It's kind of like, uh, uh, I'm considering it a jewelry, but up on a stand and on large scale, of course. But it's kind of like inlaid jewelry. And uh, it was a concept that I have, and obviously it panned out pretty well because uh, I took a first place in the showing. So that's where I get my inspiration from is some of the awesome silversmiths that are out there and uh, I just see their work and admire it. I can't do the small intricate stuff, it's just not my style, so I'm going to do it big. Charge of the Head is, uh, was an uh, um, Indian name for Tom Rogers. Tom Rogers was an Irkara scout and he enlisted uh, in the World War One. and at that particular time we weren't even citizens of our own country, not until uh, uh, 1924, that's a congressional act. And so Tom Rogers went into the service and he was small in stature, but he was also a very, very good shot. And so he became a sniper. And he was also uh, like uh, special forces at that, what they would call special forces. And so what he was best known for is that he would, uh, he would uh, sneak into the uh, enemy camps, the German camps, and he would crawl into their tents and he would capture their officers and he would bring them back. And so that's what he was known for. And so Tom Rogers goes ahead, it's like, or um, charges ahead. It's, it's the ideal of him here is an eagle whistle. He has an eagle whistle, which is the ulna of an uh, eagle. And they use it for ceremonies. And so when they, when they blow that whistle, what they're doing is calling the spirit of that eagle to uh, help them guide themselves into enemy territory. And so what the circles represent, what circles represent is like the universe or worlds. And so him having to uh, face all these different kinds of worlds and different kinds of changes in his, his lifetime and even beyond that, you know, as a soldier and, and his own people. And so the others, see the other ones are going back going back the other way, they're going back to to the camp. And so those handprints, what that means is they touch the enemy. That's what that means is they touch the enemy. So he's, he's got the two hands there, so he grabbed the enemy. And so this right here is uh, uh, the star, is that we call, there's a morning star, and then the other one we call the star boy. Now the star boy, when the first, when that sun comes up without the moon, uh, not the moon, but the star comes up in the morning early, there's another star just below it. We call that star boy. Now in our stories, the star boy is a celestial being that uh, communicates with us, a Rikaros, a Satnish. And so he, he, his characteristics is he's not afraid of war and he's brave and, and honorable. And so he, he actually admires the, the warriors when they go into battle. And some of our stories is that he came down to earth and became a human being so he could engage in battle. They also have those wolf tails on there too. And so the wolf has a power as well as being stealth and not afraid. And so that's why it's connected to it. I'm Sarah Pondigay. I'm from Arizona, a place called White Cove. Oh, and I'm of the Edgewater people, born for the wonderful white surround. Many goats are my maternal grandparents, and then my paternal is in the Tower House people. And no, I was told a year, past a year ago, to do a centennial road. And uh, of all people, I was the one that can do it. So, um, I weave a lot. So I went to sleep, and then I saw a green little thing coming out, picking from out behind the road. And then I thought, what is this? Through my dreams. And then um, it, it happened a second time 
And I woke up, and then I thought, I drew it real fast on a tablet. So then, I asked my daughter the next day, the next morning, and she said, Mama, that's called Baby Yoda. What are you talking about? But then my grandmother translated differently. She called them the star people. And I put earrings on him, and I had been. And then his bracelet and his little moccasins. And then I put, um, he's wearing a chief blanket. So, to honor my grandma and the star people. And then I thought, maybe they'll let me to live 100 years old. <laughs>